We are in the final weeks of our semester, whether we're in digital media or digital, digital imaging one. And in these final weeks, we are now to our last project. You can think of it as assignment eight, and that's what it's listed as, but it's worth 10 points rather than the usual three points for an assignment. And those 10 points do not come from a score by me, your instructor. Instead, they come from a score by the audience of the class, just like we practice for the midterm critique. So how do you get your 10 points? It gets scored on its idea from one to three. It gets scored on its execution from one to three. It gets scored on the effort you put into it from one to three. And it gets scored from zero to one on its pizzazz. You know, whether it's something that engages more than the others, right? Because trying to give you a hint of what it's like to have your work out there in the open world, trying to get attention and trying to get it to communicate on your own behalf, what you can do in terms of visual communication using digital tools. So I call it a conceptual final project. Concept in art is a word for idea. So it has to be idea driven. This is your only assignment that's not based on a technique which means you can use any digital techniques you like for it. And you can use any combination of them. You can use digital painting. You can use vectors. You can use compositing. You can use animation, right? But it has to all work towards your idea. So what we're basically doing is figuring out what we want to say with the project and then using all the tools we have to make what we say interesting <laughs> to the viewer. And it's not a logo project necessarily, right? It's not even that you always have to be clear, but you have to be engaging. You have to be interesting. So that's why it's a concept project. Now to go along with this to help you to get the very best final project possible, it's going to take some work. It's going to take some sketching. It's going to take some trying out different approaches. And that's what I call the concept project workflow. And conveniently enough, that's what our last proving ground of the semester is about. It's about using an iterative process, you know, ways to, to try out ideas quickly and to reject them, to try them again until you get what you want. So that's what I'm going to introduce. I'm not going to demonstrate this project because everyone's going to be doing something different, but I'll, I'll show you where you can find the information about it. So in unit modules, this is unit 15. It's a full concept project. Part of that is proving ground number four. And part of unit 15 is also doing your in-term self-assessment. The in-term self-assessment is just answering these five questions, right? Thinking about your process, what you've learned in the class so far, what's been helpful, and how we can really use that self-awareness to, to good effect for this final project. And then when you get to proving ground four, this is going to introduce the concept project workflow. But notice what it doesn't introduce is what our semester's theme is, right? So, and I'm going to talk you through, this is how you do your sketches and everything. But then when you hit next, once you've posted your sketches, you are ready to do your final project. And the theme for this section this semester is there are not mistakes, only lessons. So how do you interpret a theme? Think of it as, I am the art director, right? You have a communication arts magazine in front of you, right? I am asking you for a submission to my publication. And my publication is going to be called, There Are Not Mistakes, Only Lessons. So I am asking for open submissions from all of you creative individuals. And you're hoping that your work will get published in this collection because it makes some connection to the theme that's relevant and interesting, but maybe not totally obvious, right? And that your work will stand out amongst all the other entries and engage someone. Because why do people submit to communication arts? They want their work to be seen by art directors, by, by clients, by future employers. And how do they get their work to stand out? They're not going to do the most generic solution, right? They're going to do something that they... They're going to find a way to make what they want to do fit within the theme. Now, that's on a communications kind of standard, right? 
you can think of it as an Instagram competition. This is the theme for it. Submit things and then we'll post. There are not mistakes, only lessons. This is a hashtag we'll use. Or you can think of it as a fine artist. You know, for my, my art majors, my digital media people, this is a curated themed show. The, the title of the curated show is There Are Not Mistakes, Only Lessons. So that doesn't mean your piece is going to be titled There Are Not Mistakes, Only Lessons. You can title your piece whatever you want, but it's going to go into this umbrella theme, this show. And you want it to stand out. So there should be some connection, right? You can be humorous. You can be serious. You can be um, confessional. You know, you can do it in any way you want. And it, as long as it uses digital art as a main part of the process, you are allowed to do it. You don't even need to limit it to only digital art. You can sketch it physically and scan stuff in and then work that into it. I've had students print out the project and then cut the project up and then sew it together by hand or or layer different prints together in a traditional way, right? As long as digital is involved heavily, it's allowed because you're going for a good idea. You're going for the idea being well executed and communicated and you're going for effort. And you're going for pizzazz. And that's how you can get your 10 points. So here's the assignment sheet. It's very similar to the midterm critique with one exception. You're only putting up your one final piece. And then instead of putting your name on a piece of tape, you're going to do a one-page artist statement to go with the work. So that's going to help us know, first of all, the title of your piece. The title is important, even if you decide to put untitled. The name of the artist, that's important, so we know who to give the credit to. And then whatever you want to tell us about your process, your idea, to help us understand your intentions. Right? Just like when you hang something up in a museum, there'll be a little label next to it. That's what you're providing with your artist statement. So how do we get started with this theme? So on your sketchbooks, on your phones, on your messaging app, however you're going to remember it, I want you to n make note of that theme. There are not mistakes, only lessons. This is unique to this class, this semester. And I make it a link, not because there's any amazing insights here, but just to kind of show you, don't have any preconceptions about how you can use this theme. So this is a uh, 60s inspired digital kind of pop art poster portrait of Bob Ross who's kind of known for saying in his PBS how to paint specials uh, there are no mistakes just happy little accidents right. and you can see the whole process here the different formations so that might be how this artist who's trying to get a job <laughs> uh, relates to this theme and would submit it. How are you going to interpret this? How are you going to have fun with it? Make it your own. Make it a piece for your portfolio. And what digital art techniques that you've learned in the semester and that you've, you want to get more time with, you know, pushing it towards a finished idea. Okay, so you've written down that idea. Now we go to the proving ground, which is just the, the step before in the module. So proving ground number four is to apply an iterative process. In Zach's classes for, for marketing and social media, he, he calls this process creative, right? And each thing has its own, its own step. I just call it my concept project workflow. And it's basically four steps, but there's a step zero, so really five steps. <laughs> so, because before you start, you kind of have to go before what we usually do. Usually step one, is you're going to start the assignment that you're given. But in this project, because it's based on an idea, there's a step before step one, which is you have to give yourself the assignment. And you get to define what that assignment is. And because you're earning the badge, creative problem solving, it's helpful to think of an assignment that you're giving yourself as a problem. So what problem are you going to set for yourself? Defining your problem is step zero. And in design circles, this is called a brief. 
And I've only had it called a brief from, from British clients or Australian clients, but it's kind of carried over. So everyone in the design world will know what a brief is. And it's kind of the, the summary of the project. Like, what are the goals? What is, what, is, what is the thing you're trying to do? You don't have a client giving this to you. You know, you don't have someone say, do a 60s era portrait of a PBS television personality. You know, that would be a brief. Instead, you have to come up with the brief yourself. And a brief is usually not visual. A brief is usually written. And so we're going to do a one sentence statement summary. For those of you who are not big fans of writing, right, which isn't uncommon in, in the, the arts majors, it's incredibly helpful to force yourself to do this, right? And that's to write a one-sentence synopsis of what you want to be able to accomplish with this project. This is your idea. This is your concept in one sentence. So this is a little article about how to do it for creative writing. Like whether you want to write a memoir, whether you want to write a, a journalistic piece, you know, whatever it might be. A poem. What do you want to make the audience feel from it? You know, that might go into your statement summary. I know that's going to feel weird for right now. But I'll, I'm going to give you my examples. And these come from a, uh, a previous student who's allowed me to use their work. So an example of a statement summary is I will use the familiar imagery of memes and cancel culture to satirize our society's needs to politicize every bleeping thing, no matter how obvious or important. So what's nice about this statement summary, and they edited it kind of as they went, right? But the first thing you should try to do is include the things you're most interested in right now. Does that make sense? Because all of you have passions and interests. This is a chance for you to bring them into your work. And it doesn't have to be memes. And it doesn't have to be obsessed with discourse around cancel culture, right? It doesn't need to be political, but it can be. It doesn't need to be cultural, but it can be. It can be incredibly niche, you know, like a love of Bob Ross. Something else. But try to put that into your statement somewhere. Try to challenge yourself. I really want to do more artwork that involves my cat. So how can I make that work for there are not mistakes, only lessons, right? So I want to use my cat to demonstrate that no matter how much you screw up, you are not irredeemable, something like that, right? And then that might get my mind thinking, oh, my cat like is always spilling his food dish. And why am I always picking it up? You know, it's like, why can't, whatever. You just you start thinking, and then how can I make that relatable? How can I engage? So that's the the problem. The next step you're going to do, number one, is collecting your ideas, not outside ideas, your ideas, and acknowledging what I call acknowledging the cliches, right? So when I think immediately of, I want to use my cat for this, and sometimes my cat makes mistakes, but I love them anyway, right? What are the cliches that immediately come to mind? Well, cute cats on the internet, you know, they're everywhere. Cute cats making mistakes and then being unrepentant, that's everywhere. Grumpy cat kind of statements, that's, I don't know. Garfield and hating Mondays. Acknowledge the cliches. That's your brainstorming. So you actually want to generate this stuff. You want to write down or sketch the obvious imagery that occurs to you immediately. And it can go in lots of different directions. So maybe I do something that's kind of Garfield-ish, but with my cat. Or maybe I do something that's um, Grumpy Cat-ish, but with my cat. Or maybe I do something I can has Cheeseburger-ish, but with my cat. You know, I push it around in these different ways. But I'm not like relying on reference too much yet right these are my associations and then because we're not relying on reference too much yet you do some quick thumbnails this is the first part of your proving ground too and this is what i need you to have by next class so quick thumbnail sketches so this student took this this student was also taking my art history class at the time which was uh, art history survey 2 Arts 1304, for anyone who wants to sign up for it. And it goes from the Renaissance to contemporary art. 
and we're near the end of the semester. So they had some 